Yo. Oh. Hello? Right on time. Oh, look who right it on is. time. It's right when we start the podcast, guys. How are you? Oh, wait. I, I, I uh, accidentally timed that. <laughs> I forgot I need like a whole new setup for this. Oh, wait. No, wait. I could do it. Hold on. Uh, anyway, we have Kevin here, guys. Hello. Kevin, how are you hey. doing? You like literally just I'm joined the Discord good. as we I'm as we started. Tired. <laughs> I am yeah, also tired, but you have more reason goes, to be. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. Um, Constantly tired. I've been tired since 2019. So. Same. Oh, only 2019. <laughs> well, I've been especially <laughs> tired since 2019. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, you're not AJ. Let me change that. What's your at? Kevin Kenson, right? Yeah. Yep. Just nice and simple. How do I sound, by the way? You sound actually perfectly fine. Yeah. Beautiful. Are you using the AirPods? No, we, uh, we're we borrowing a blue mic from Neighbor. Oh, so. good. Well, it sounds uh, great. Yeah. Yep. Guys, uh, we got Kevin here today uh, for a very special reason. Uh, but first, uh, I want to thank Spoopy Girl for the seven months and The Real Wago for the 100 bits. Good evening, peeps. How was your week? It was good. Will, how was your week? Uh, I don't know. Did you see my Friday tweet about me smelling coffee on the floor and breaking my headsets? Yes, I did. <laughs> that was... That was on top of the fact that the guys coming to fix my garage said they were coming Saturday, but they're like, no, actually, we're going to come at 730 in the morning. <laughs> so that was that was fun. That I was would, a, little, I, a little hectic weekend. But. I would I would have said, don't, don't, just don't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so. we know how Kevin's week went. Kevin, yes. you got you got the you got the switch. Just surprise. When did you get it? Yeah. When did you get in your hands? Uh, noon yesterday. Uh, I mean, at least the box. We didn't unbox it until about one, I think. Like that's when we shot the unboxing video. So yeah, it's around then that I've been able to like actually have full hands on with it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so uh, how does it feel? Is it heavier? Is this <laughs> nice big screen that much nice and bigger? Yeah. I mean, I've been messing with a bunch of stuff. Uh, I haven't weighed it yet. That was actually on my to-do list tonight. Um, but it does feel a little heavier. I think Nintendo already posted this, didn't they? Isn't that on their specs somewhere? I didn't even check. Yeah. I, I know that it's... Wait, I knew this. It was like a few millimeters thicker. Well, I mean, I mean, not thicker. A wider. Uh, wider. Yeah, like it's the entire inch, yeah, yeah, Or at least based on there. They've, yeah. They've already said like certain accessories will not be compatible with it, especially certain Labo accessories will not be compatible with it. Yeah. Right. And I've actually, that's one of the things I've been testing is because as soon as I even posted having this thing, the main stuff I've been getting from people is just like, will it still work with this? Will it still work with this? Uh, and the answers have been very mixed because it kind of depends on how the thing fits. Uh, I think the general rule most people should be aware of is just uh, the tighter of a fit something is on the regular Switch, it's going to be that much harder or worse on the OLED. You know, so if right. something had like a little give room with the switch, you're you're probably gonna be able to make it work, but it might not be comfortable. Uh, if it's something that's like a rigid, perfectly fit the switch body, a little 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 more awkward. Something not, like not, the, not as good. Something like the Satisfy Grip probably not gonna work. So, but something like something like so an old I, like case will probably work, like like the big thick cases. Yeah, cases I've had no problem. So the Satisfy, because that was the first thing I tried, because that was what everyone asked. Um, <laughs> if you really, if you really want it to work, I, I think you can get it in there. But it's like, it's gonna be tough to take it back out. Uh, you're probably gonna feel a little worried as you're like trying to make it fit. Uh, it, generally, it seems like for stuff like that, it is gonna be better to buy a relaunch. Uh, option which is definitely something worth considering for anyone that was debating like upgrading right because now it's not just buying a switch it's like oh guess what you might also have to replace insert number of accessories yeah. here right yeah that that that's something i'm worried about I, I assume you have like a bunch of stuff you're you're trying to fit it with to see what works and what doesn't so you can tell everybody in a video yeah, basically. I mean, well, so today I posted a video and basically one of my things was like, hey, like, ask me your questions. Uh, and about 80% of those questions are just, will it work with blank? So I think that Q&A video <laughs> is going to kind of turn into like 
still doing that, but then also being, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, and a lot of stuff still is fine, but it, it really is when it comes to like grips or tight fitting cases where it's an issue. Interesting. Okay. So, so it's just ever so wide. To, according to Nintendo's official website, the OLED switch is 0.1 inches longer. Yep. And it weighs like that 0.1, just apparently screwing everything up. And <laughs> with Joy Cons, it's 0.93 pounds compared to the original Switch with Joy Cons was 0.88 pounds. Yeah, so it's barely. I mean, it's heavier, but it's it feels a right. little more dense, like just the weight distribution, I guess. But yeah, it's it's pretty negligible. It's like if I pick both up and I go like, oh, like you know, how heavy is this, and then how heavy is this other one? Uh, you can notice it when you're really looking for it, but it's not a thing where you're like, oh man, this thing's ridiculously different and so heavy <laughs> now. Um, the screen though is really. I mean, that's uh, we talked about this a little bit before when we did the whole video of you, me, Wood, and um, Shank talking about like thoughts on Switch OLED. Uh, I've personally been of the opinion that I think OLED does make a big difference. I don't know if it makes a big enough difference to be worth paying 350 bucks as an upgrade if you already own one. But just in terms of like, especially for someone looking to get into a Switch for the first time, uh, I, oh, OLED makes a big difference. I mean, right <laughs> now the experience I've been having, the games that have really poppy bright colors you can see the difference. I mean, it, it, it even looks, uh, doing certain games side by side, you can see how the regular Switch model, the Redbox one specifically, uh, how it, everything just looks a little more washed out comparison. You know, it looks fine when you're used to it, but as soon as you have them side by side, you're like, oh, I, I like that one more. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's, it's pretty noticeable. Have you compared it to any OLED phones or anything? Like, how, how does the screen no, compare that to is, that? Yeah, that is on my to-do list as well. That is something I've been meaning to do because that was something a few people asked as well, comparing it to like certain iPhone screens, certain uh, Samsung phones, that kind of deal. Uh, that's on my to-do list. It's not, I mean, honestly, part of the reason I haven't done it yet is because it's not my top priority. I'm really mostly interested in just how this fares against other Switch, <laughs> Switch right. products. Um, but I know that's a thought out there. I mean, it's using a Samsung panel, so I would imagine there's at least some degree of similarity there, you know. Um, I think we were both yeah. trying to find similar panels, and it's I we it like didn't exist. Like it didn't look like Samsung had panels that were around that size that were OLED for some reason. Mm. Yeah, I mean it might be a new panel they were making for this specifically. Then I don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I again I have not really yeah. deep dived into the phone comparison yet, uh, but that is something I'm I'm kind of looking at along with all the other fun things. Right, right. What games have you tried? So I've jumped between a few. Uh, the main stuff I was really doing so far, uh, I was either focusing on stuff that like has a lot of black in it because you want to see how you know the, the OLED darks get in comparison, uh, and then other games that are just like vibrantly colorful. So for instance, uh, WarioWare, I think looks the colors on it are beautiful. Uh, even though it's not exactly like a visually intensive game, I did Undertale for a bit just because it is, you know, mostly black screen with just, yeah, you know, yeah. pops of color here and there in white. And yeah, I mean, it's it's darker on the OLED than it would be <laughs> on a regular Switch. Uh, I think my favorite game, though, that I messed with, and I mean, this is just annoying because it's what I was talking about off 2020 anyways, uh, Hades. Because Hades has that mixture of there's very vibrant colors in some parts, but then you still have those edges and little bits of the screen that are also just very deep black. So it gives you kind of that full range of both. Uh, and it looks fantastic on the OLED. Uh, I will say this isn't really directly relevant to the panel, but I did also go ahead and also play a bunch of games that I know have problems on the Switch. Uh, you know, uh, Link's Awakening, where it has that little kind of stuttering when you're going to another screen. Uh, Hyrule Warriors Age Calamity, where there's that performance drops and frame dips you're getting during certain high intense action points. Uh, and the reason I did that was just to be like, yep, it's it's the same. I mean, it looks prettier because the colors, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. yeah, like the it absolutely has, you know, not, not really a surprise, you know, but I right. just, I feel like some people are still looking for that hard confirmation. Uh, and so that was one of the things I did. Yeah, that uh, was a good opportunity for out. them to make a change and they just straight up did not. Didn't. But that's did why not. people were upset that we didn't get a Switch yeah. Pro. We got just a regular old just a regular old Switch with a big meaty screen. Yeah. And that seems to be the this reaction. It's a beautiful I'm screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be the reaction I'm seeing from like all the like, you know, major news outlets that are reviewing the Switch OLED. It's like, yeah, the screen is fantastic. Everything else is exactly the same though. So I, you know, it'd be yeah. interesting to see 
how well this sells if people are really just going to yeah. buy it for the screen. It, it, it looks like one CNET... thing I will say that I feel. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say one thing I will say, and I, I talked about this in, in a video I posted today. Um, something I feel like I haven't seen a lot of people talk about is actually, I mean, yes, the OLED panel is absolutely the big main change that's worth talking about. Uh, but the overall build does seem higher quality as well. The plastic's involved. It has a glass screen because it's OLED instead of, you know, the, right. the LED panel before. Um, and I mean, also, obviously, the kickstand. Uh, this is a weirdly super specific thing. Uh, I didn't talk about today's video, but you know how with the Switch, you get that little bit of Joy-Con jiggle? Yeah. It's it's not gone. It's still there, but it's less. Oh, like, you mean like, be less. like it feels more sturdy overall. The rails. You're saying the rails are tighter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just a little could, bit. It, is, it, be, it does seem more sturdy. Yeah. Could that be because it's a new Switch or could that be like something they fixed? I, I did have that thought. Um, I don't even necessarily a fix. I don't know how conscious of a choice it was. It might just have to do with how they changed some parts of the body. Um, what I ended up doing, because it is very bad on my main Switch that I use, uh, but then I compared it to the Mario Red Switch, which, I mean, I've opened and used, but not nearly to the same extent. Um, and it did, th that was kind of a midpoint almost. Like, it wasn't as bad as my main Switch, uh, but it was still more so than the OLED. So, I mean, it, it also might mean that over time, the OLED is still going to get that, but it's less at the start, at least, uh, right. from what I can tell. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, I'm still working on, you know, full comparison thoughts and that kind of thing. Uh, but kind of going along the lines with those other people are saying with their official reviews and stuff, uh, look, as an upgrade, yeah, it's a, not a huge selling point, right? Like, you've got to be really yeah. willing to just to throw some money down for better display, which I think is cool, but I don't necessarily think it's $350 out of your pocket cool. You know, maybe if you get a really good trade-in or sell your current Switch for well enough. Um, but as like a first-time Switch buyer or someone who Switch is broken and they're looking to get a new one, 50 bucks more, I, it, it feels pretty worth it to me. You know, I'll say so far. Uh, I, I still want to check some other stuff, but uh, as a first-time buyer option, it, it seems like a no-brainer to me. Yeah. How's the sound coming out of it? Because they, they're one of the bullet points is enhanced audio, and I'm curious how enhanced is it compared to like a regular switch? So this is something that I talked about a little bit today too, where that that is on my to-do list. Because um, really, for the first day. I, I really just focused on just wanting to play games and not, I'm not diving into comparison mode yet. I'm not diving into like tech analysis mode. Uh, I just right. wanted to play with the system and have fun and just kind of experience that first. Um, I will say I was playing this, the OLED at the same time as uh, my fiance, Christine, while she was on her Switch and we both turned our volume to max and it seemed the same. So as far as like max volume, we weren't playing the same games so that might have something too like i gotta do like the same game kind of comparison right. um but it didn't seem like it was louder or anything uh it might be a situation where the audio on the oled is maybe a little better separation maybe it's a little more clear uh, not something i've in-depth compared yet i will say that if there is a difference uh it is not to the point where i'm like noticing that immediately right okay. it's not like i turned on the oled yeah. and went like oh yeah the sound on this is oh so much better right. uh, it sounds good it doesn't sound bad uh but it doesn't seem different enough for me to be like, oh, yeah, sound amazing. I mean, who knows? Maybe when I do the side by side, I'll change my mind. But for now, well, that was one of those things where they said enhanced audio and they didn't really specify what that meant. And nobody yeah. really could seem to get an answer as to what that means. <laughs> just it was enhanced. Right. I, th I think um, people were saying it's probably just bigger sound holes because the sound holes yeah. looked different. But all the internals seem to be the yeah. same. So that's probably something to do with it. Uh, some people in the yeah. chat are asking any burn in. I, I would imagine it's too early to tell if there's going to be any burn in yeah. or something like that. Yeah, really early to tell with burn in. Um, and I think the main, because here's the burn in debate, right? I think there's very specific scenarios where burn in is a very legitimate concern. Because uh, some people are like, oh, well, as long as you're playing the game, it's not a big deal, right? But I mean, if you have UI that's locked in place, and really mm -hmm. the big one, right, is any retro games that have a border. You know, if you're playing retro games that have a border that is static and you're just doing like a 12 hour marathon, is that going to be a problem? Um, it's too early to tell. Yes, I could potentially just be like, screw it. I'm going to put something on with a border and play it for 14 hours straight and see what happens. I'm not really interested in breaking the OLED switch that I have on hand right now. Well, not breaking, but like causing burn in right away. Uh, maybe that's something I'll kind of force test later. 
Um, I was going to say, but that's it, those, those, yeah. if if somebody gets maybe somebody will get a switch and leave it on for like a week on some screen yeah. and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that'd be but a see, good that test. That stuff always do. kind of bothers me too. But, like, yes, but is that a real world test? Like to play a game for. <laughs> 140 well, hours or whatever it is that, for a that's week, like, like straight. That, like, well, that's there that, are review sites that do things like that, though. It's yeah. like extreme, yeah. you know, stress test situations. But 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 the idea is that you're not right. play. You're never gonna play the game for a week straight. But you're yeah. going yeah. to play a game that has a UI for potentially a thousand hours. So like yeah. cumulatively, yeah, you sure, might over damage it like that. Yeah. But I can't imagine... Yeah, if you're only playing that one time. Yeah. I can't imagine the burn-in is going to be too bad. Because, I mean, uh, there is burn-in on OLED TVs and stuff. But uh, you know, I don't really ever hear about it on phones. And phones have a UI. You have the home screen and yeah. stuff and the lock screen. And you'd imagine that that would get burned in pretty quickly. So uh, I'd imagine yeah. that there's burn-in's probably a problem, but not something we'll... We might potentially never see burn-in being like a real problem on most people's switches. At least not. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, yeah, it's gonna be one of those things where, like, a year or net from now, we actually see what the turnout rate is, right? Because even when mm -hmm. you talk about people doing stress tests like that, the yeah. the real world, like for regular users, right? It's, it's it's the kind of thing where when people first started talking about Joy-Con drift, it wasn't taken that seriously, but then it started happening <laughs> yeah. a lot eight months later, yeah. and then it was like, okay, wait, hold on, <laughs> we got to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and that's the kind of thing, right? Like, well, I know the we just switch. Need to see. They have like that burn-in reduction when you put it in the dock, so to prevent burn-in on screen on your TV. On TV screen. Yeah. So, but that's not in uh, it's, the Switch itself portable mode. It, it is in this one at least. Oh, it is. Uh, I left it on. I left it on for five minutes and it dimmed. Uh, and then obviously okay. the Switch has also a sleep mode option, so you can tell it to go to sleep after three minutes if you're that worried about it. Uh, right. I well, think it's I'll, as low I'll as one minute in. of inactivity, but I know this was on the Wii way back in the day, mm -hmm. and I think there's a equivalent on the switch where like it'll shift the picture one pixel like so, every so, minute so, like, so that you don't is, notice it but like that is only on the wii and the wii u i, I it's the okay. switch the switch yeah. calls it burn-in reduction but it's really just i think it just dims it on the tv and it also happens yeah. to dim it on portable mode but i think portable mode it's mostly to save battery uh but right. in the oled yeah. version it's okay. probably also for burn-in reduction that's what i think uh, that when i when i looked into it a while ago um uh yeah. so cnet has an article and they say uh the nintendo switch is the nintendo switch oled hands-on the best upgrade may not be the screen and uh they are talking about the kickstand so tell me everything about this fucking I mean, kickstand. Yes. <laughs> I, I did I mean, see I your video I, mean... I did see your video like when you first unbox it and like you were so happy to play it and like they did in the commercial when they first mm -hmm. launched it yeah, I mean, that was my biggest complaint way back when the original Switch came out right away. I've always hated the kickstand. Now, to be honest, yeah. in my own personal use, I don't actually do tabletop mode that often. Now, part of that is because I never liked doing it because I'm dealing with the kickstand. That might change now. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the kickstand is a night and day difference. Don't think it's $350 worth if you have a regular <laughs> Switch right now. But I mean, certainly moving from that tiny kickstand. And the thing about that, though, right, is I mean, there's how many different accessories now that kind of address that, you know? Yeah. Uh, even yeah. Nintendo has their like little adaptable charge case or charge stand thing that basically fixes that because you're just not relying on it anymore. I, I will uh, say, I only. But it's a ever... very welcome change. I only ever use the kickstand when I'm trying to shoot B-roll of the thing. <laughs> and the first switch I ever had, the kickstand would fall out all the time. You would like tap it and the kickstand would just fly right out. You could barely ever hold it up right. But uh, every switch I've gotten after that, the kickstand was pretty rigid. Like it didn't, like, I felt like I was going to break it if I popped it out. Um, but obviously you can only have it out or in. Like there's, there's only two ways you can have the kickstand. Like in this new one, you mm -hmm. have a hundred and something degrees. Something yeah, like I mean it's just it's friction based. So like, I mean it just it'll stay in place you got, no matter. You could have it all the way out like middle, this. You could have put it, it in the middle of the screen, like right in front of your face. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. Yeah, like that's the full range of motion right there. Jeez. And it's 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 good resistance throughout. Now I don't know how long that resistance is going to maintain. Maybe this is the kind of thing where a year from now we find out that all these got super loose. Uh, but for right now, I mean, at any of these angles, it holds in place fine. 
So, so yeah, I, I, it looks like it goes really far back. Like it's like a freaking easel. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah, I'm probably like what 150 degrees. Not a full 180, obviously, but yeah, no. But that's but it, like, go, it. Gets almost flat. Yeah, that's pretty. That's how pretty often sick. are you gonna be playing on tabletop mode like that? Well, well, with a drawing <laughs> yeah, on the freaking degree. screen. <laughs> oh, true. So yeah. they did that just for colors live. Yes. <laughs> Art is important. Art is yes. very important. I mean, I mean, I think the biggest deal about the kickstand is that, like, the old kickstand, it was only held up on the right side, and you top, you, 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 like, put a little bit of pressure on the top left corner, the whole thing falls apart. So this, yeah. you got yeah. uh, integrity across the whole back of the screen, so that's pretty good. Yeah, for sure. So is is the SD micro, micro SD card slot still under the kickstand, or did they, like, put that somewhere else? I mean, yes, technically it's under the kickstand. The kickstand right. just covers a whole lot larger area than it did before. Uh, basically, it's like right there. Okay. There we go. Like right there. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't have its own little thing. It's just, yeah, hidden under uh, this. Because it's not behind it, yeah. yeah. Chat, does chat have any questions left? Uh, some, yes. Somebody said, I hope it's hackable. Listen, it's going to be exactly no. the same. <laughs> they didn't really do much. Yeah, it's the, the same inside. OS. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It, sounds, it sounds exactly the same. Yeah, the yeah, only yeah. thing I've seen different as far as the OS goes, I mean, it's running off the same one, but I think it just detects that it's an OLED instead of a regular, is there's an extra option in the settings menu to activate vibrant mode, which is what Ooh, helps uh, make the OLED like pop even more. Got it. Whoa, I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah, if you turn it off, it looks closer to like a regular Switch display. Uh, not the same still, because obviously like the blacks get deeper and darker. Mm. Uh, but if you have that on that's also what kind of really helps with the separation and just makes a lot of the colors pop away more so is that an option because it's going to suck the battery life is that why probably i don't know to be honest that's my guess uh, i was actually one of the tests i was going to run was like having that on and just leave a game running for like 30 minutes and then fully charge it and do the same thing again checking battery like that is always so weird though because percentages can kind of waver a little bit it's, it's always weird but I'm going to see if that is, because I, I honestly don't know why that's an option otherwise, unless it has something to do with as an accessibility issue. I don't know if maybe uh, for certain colorblind options, it's better to have that off or something. Um, that That is not within my knowledge. Uh, Marimba Pirate in the chat says, funny story, my husband bought a used Google Pixel 3, and the previous owner has very clearly played a ton of Candy Crush, because the UI is totally burnt into the screen. <laughs> it's most notable when the screen is white, well, but you, you can see it a lot of the time. I have a Google Pixel 3a, and I was like, I was like, I can't imagine they're being burned in on this screen, but there you go. That, that I, I'd imagine Candy That'll Crush do would do it. Yeah. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, blah, blah, blah. playing Mario Kart with four dudes on the Switch only happened once in portable mode, so I mean as gimmicky as Nintendo gets. <laughs> that sounds like a sounds like a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, tabletop mode super niche. I doubt that most like users ever play with it. Uh, more than a couple times per year. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's very specific. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think does I the, did it once it's on like, an airplane. <laughs> I did it once on an airplane just to see what it was like, and then I've never done it again. Just to be like the commercial. Exactly. Exactly like yeah, the commercial. Uh, why put it in the commercial? One time, <laughs> yeah, I think the one time I didn't do this, but I saw it kind of in the wild. Uh, I was waiting in a line for food that was like a two and a half hour wait. And so this one group behind us had a switch that they set up in a little tabletop mode and we're just doing that. Like, that's like the one time I've seen it. Like just yeah. out and about. Yeah, I I saw that. Uh, I was at Moe's with my friend, and there was a group of kids behind us playing Smash, and they had it in tabletop mode all the way in the corner. And they challenged me to a to a duel. It was like when Smash first came out, and I got wrecked. <laughs> Edward Bova in the chat says, "Does the Switch OLED make games run faster, like the new 3DS did?" Uh, unfortunately, no. No. No, I mean, I'm going to double check it because because people are going to ask, but no, yeah. the internals are the same. Yeah, he, he asked specifically uh, about Hyrule Warriors. Uh, it's probably not going to make that frame rate any better. Also, yeah. in the last Nintendo Direct, the frame rate was horrible in their own trailer. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's not a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> sure is. Love it. <laughs> anyway, uh, Kevin, thank you for taking your time yes. to, to talk to us for for this long uh yeah. i don't want to 
I don't. No, of I, I'm sure you got a lot more content to make out of your, yeah, out of your fancy new switch. It's a busy week. <laughs> <laughs> I got so, I got a couple things planned. Yeah, as I've rubbed okay. my eye, I think like the 80th time on the screen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. It's still daylight over there. I don't know what the hell's yeah. going on. Yeah, it's 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 not late. I just haven't. To be honest, it's it, the biggest thing I think was just I had such like an adrenaline rush yesterday from being like, oh my god, we actually got a hold of this thing. What the hell? That right. like I just didn't I didn't sleep. Like I slept, but not it wasn't restful. You know, like I yeah, think I right. finally fell asleep around like two or three a.m. and then I got up at like six. Like it just, yeah, yeah. I panicked so, when I saw you got it. I was like, I'm wait. Where are the? I looked up flights. I was like, where are the flights? I'm going. <laughs> but anyway, well and. And what well, is it booked for? We'll, we're, we'll, uh, the world will know soon. <laughs> uh, Kevin, thank you for being here. Everybody, go to his channel. Watch. You have two videos on yeah. it now. Yes. Uh, and yeah, you will have two up right now. And uh, you'll have I more will... soon. <laughs> yes. I will say the next one I'm working right now, I mean, I know I answered a lot of questions here on stream, but um, the next video I'm doing is like a Q&A style thing where I'm just answering any kind of weirdly specific questions some people might have if there's an accessory you're curious about to see if it works or not anything like that uh if you want to know you leave a comment on my twitter or on the video i posted today i shot a bunch of questions today but i'm gonna shoot a couple more tomorrow morning so uh yeah if you have anything we didn't cover right now uh you can hit me up there and All if right. i can answer it i will that his ad is right under his cool. face it's just kevin yeah. kenson kevin everyone go follow him for all your switch updates that bob <laughs> doesn't post about no, you can follow two Switch YouTubers, okay? You and can? You <laughs> I didn't know that yeah, was just, a thing. There's, I mean, more than that, I would hope. There's there's a lot of us. Only playing, two. I think. <laughs> only two. You only okay. get two. Who's anyway. going to tell Wood? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, we'll we'll, uh, no problem, we'll see you hopefully very soon. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right, take care. Again. Take cool. care. Later, guys. Bye. See ya. What a guy. We love we love Kevin around here. Such a, such a nice nice man. <sighs> that was good. That was that was yeah. a good a good chat. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's this tur this week turned into such a shit show because uh. So last week Nintendo's like, oh, you got. Oh, you think you're gonna have free time? Nintendo Direct. Yeah. It's just a little here's a little Nintendo Direct for you. It's six PM Eastern. Yeah. So So it completely screws up everything. Yes. So I'm out here rushing out a video. Uh and then I I saved the video I had to post for Monday. And then this week I had a video ready to go for Thursday. It's done another video done that I did weeks ago. And then Kevin gets the OLED switch. And then it's like, oh shit. Now I gotta get a fucking OLED switch. <laughs> but how? It but how? For another two weeks. I almost I almost bought a ticket to go fly to Kevin, but uh there there's some strings being pulled and maybe this week I might get my grubby hands on an OLED switch. But we'll stay tuned to youtube.com slash wolfden and we'll see. Uh but anyway, boys uh, and girls, do girls these, watch the show. <laughs> do these articles have anything else to say about the Switch OLED? Or are we done with that topic? Uh, I think we're done with that topic. Pretty much everything Kevin talked about is in these articles. There's one that like actually shows the difference between an original Switch screen and the OLED screen, and mm -hmm. like how just how bright it is, and it does look a lot brighter. Um. But otherwise, yeah, they pretty much hit all the same beats. Nintendo Prime got one? Wow. Does he also live in California next to Kevin? I guess he does. Okay, so you can follow three Nintendo Switch YouTubers. <laughs> but that's it. But that's it. Uh, anyway, so uh, next Friday is when the Nintendo Switch OLED model, as it's officially called, mm -hmm comes out so it's october 8th also we'll get metroid dread also i'll be at yeah. too many games you can come hang out that saturday and that sunday we can touch oled yeah. switches together 
And I will be at New York Comic Con that Sunday, that Saturday. Uh, oh. Do not touch my Switch. <laughs> I will not appreciate that. <laughs> Wait, why do you have a pass? Oh, you got approved. I had, I got a pass. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no, 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 wait. I you got approved. You money. bought a pass. Why? I, I bought a pass because because I didn't know how I was gonna get a pass from you, and it was just yeah. easier to buy a pass, so I bought yeah, a pass. True. Okay. Not that it was easy at all, because fucking Reed Pop does not make it easy to go to their own goddamn convention. Well, if you want to go with a friend, I got a pass. <laughs> okay. My friends are already going, so. Okay. The, the people I want to go to this thing are going to this thing, so. Hey! Other than you, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's that. Hopefully, we'll get our own grubby hands on an OLED switch pretty soon. I would love to leave it on for like a week and just see what happens. You know, like leave it on like a like a weird yeah. splash screen and just see if we could burn in some colors. Like like see how rigid it really is. But then then I'm basically but ruining then, a switch. Even yeah. if it even if it even if it's fine afterwards, it's still gonna yeah. feel like I'm ruining the switch. I'm putting mileage yeah. on it that it doesn't need. Um, yeah. So. I, I would not recommend that. I'm basically throwing three hundred fifty dollars out the window, but it's it's for it's for the science, Will. It's science, yes, for the content. For the content. Uh, okay. Uh, let's oh, let's read some notification. We oh, got yeah, we got a lot while we were talking to Kevin over there. Yes. Uh, somebody's making food. Whatever. The person, I think it's whenever the person below me uses the stove, mm -hmm. it all just all the smell just comes up, and they're good cooks. Oh, uh, <laughs> it never become, it never smells you bad. Become friend, you should become friends with them. I think I tried to get into their apartment once, so they probably don't like me. Probably. <laughs> like I like I thought it was my apartment, and I was just on the wrong floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, where do we leave off? Uh, the real Wago, 100 bits. Good evening, peeps. Oh, yeah. How was your week? Ramb with the two months. Greetings from Denmark. WB and KK. What does that mean? Oh, you guys are WB and KK. Oh, well, I'm BW. And that's WW. No, w WB is Wolf, bo Wolf Boys or Wolf Bros, I think. Oh, and Kevin Kenson. Oh, I thought it was like that's what their names were. Okay. <laughs> It's Suika. Thank you for the prime. Nucker, thank you for the 13 months. Looking good, boys. Thanks, dude. Spoopy girl, thank you for gifting a sub. The man, thank you for the prime. Ram, thank you for gifting a sub. C CJ Gabriel, thank you for the eight months. Ten months strong, baby. Hell yeah. Oh, it was ten total. I got to nice. start reading the totals. I'm dumb. <laughs> R Bill, thanks for the hundred bits. Yay, Wolf KK sandwich. That's right, he was right in between us. Yeah, that's that's what you come here for. Hot sandwich action. And R Bill, thanks for gifting four subs. Boys, how you doing? <laughs> uh, let me just time a man out real quick. Okay. Uh, let, uh, so the so we have to talk about the Nintendo Direct, but not really yeah. because I already have a whole ass video on it. I would like to get right. Will's opinion on some stuff, but the first thing that I want to get Will's opinion on is the most important thing that I didn't talk yeah. about at all. It seems to be the only thing people got out of the Direct. It's <laughs> aside because from like one or two other reveals. It's because like the games are a big deal, but. Yeah. The cast of the Super Mario Brothers movie is mainstream big deal. Yes. Because everybody knows who Mario is. And everyone knows yes. who Chris Pratt is. And yes. everybody can have an opinion on this. This yes. website, you pulled Entertainment. Uh, Entertainment or, Weekly. Yeah. They yes. used the worst picture of Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... I I chose this site because, like, you can go. We can go slide by side, slide by slide, and it'll mm. show, like, go through each one, each cast member individually. Please, will so, uh, starting with Christopher Pratt as Super Mario Mario. They sure uh, did do that, Will. Um, uh, uh, they they made decisions with this movie. So <laughs> this was a choice. I think he's a great actor. 
I think he's very funny. I think he's a great voice actor. He was great in the Lego movie. I have no doubts that he's going to be just fine. I really hope he doesn't do an Italian accent. <laughs> like, Same. what the fuck? Like, like that's going to be weird. So I think it's important to, to stress, uh, especially myself, I never assumed that they were going to get Charles Martinet to be Mario in this movie or that they were going to like, I, I didn't, or that they were going to like try to like voice match him in any way. They were definitely going to get like a name actor to be Mario because illumination, that's what they do. They they are the type of animation studio. They'll get a name actor to be the main character to try and mm -hmm. sell the movie because they don't think you're going to go see the movie just because it's a Mario movie. I'm not one of those people who hates Chris Pratt. I know, like, as soon as his name was announced, there's a whole section of the internet that got, like, really mad at that. Um, he is in too many things, and I think we can yes. use a break from him. Um, that's one. Two, Chris Pratt is good in two very specific kinds of roles. There's the lovable idiot, like Andy in Parks and Rec, or Emmett from the Lego movie. And the uh, roguish idiot, like Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Yes. Anything anything else he tries to do, like full-on action hero guy, or like more serious guy, it doesn't work. Now, Mario doesn't really have much of a personality. He's not really a character in the way like Sonic is a character. He, he's more like Mickey Mouse in that he's a blank slate that reacts more to what's going on around him. Right. And I don't necessarily think Chris Pratt has that energy. So, so that's... I don't think he has, like, the capability to, like, morph that into something worth watching for two hours. So that's why I kind of thought, like, uh, that they would just go with Charles Martinet, like cast the big name actors around him, you know, and, and have Mario barely talk, have, have a, have a side character, like, like freaking uh, have somebody like, 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 I know we don't really like when, when like, for example, there's something like the Sonic movie and they have to cast like an actor in a new role to be, just be alongside Sonic to like welcome right. him, welcome in, welcome him into Earth, but it makes sense when you have a character that doesn't talk at all, or like barely talks or doesn't emote well. You they need something to bounce off of. In this case, Miyamoto specifically said Chris Pratt is going to be talking a lot, <laughs> and it's like no, yeah. that's what we don't want. The it's thing the, is like not the Mario we want. So like. A Super Mario Brothers movie, you assume that Super Mario is going to have a major role. And that requires a lot of dialogue. And we all love Charles Martinet as Mario, but have you ever heard him talk for more than yeah. two sentences? Yeah, it's not great. It's not great. Like, it's it's only good in short bursts. So, like, I understand the need to, like, cast somebody who can carry a film... I just don't know if they cast the right actor to carry this particular film. That is all. Yeah, well, I would I, love to be proven wrong. He seems to be into it. He posted that video on his Instagram. He seems to be into it, but I don't know. Hey, I don't it's know. me, Mario. Yeah. He said Mario. I'm a little upset about that. I'm sure there's a style guy that he had to adhere to. He, he didn't do the voice, so <laughs> maybe he was Apparently just he's complete not allowed misdirection. To. And that's a thing. Apparently, he wasn't allowed to like reveal the voice yet. Well, he, he said they're still like, working like, on it. Yeah, but like when Ben Schwartz was cast as Sonic, he wasn't allowed to like use his Sonic voice in interviews, which is weird because it doesn't sound that different <laughs> from Ben Schwartz's voice. Right. Uh, so in every medium that I've seen Mario in outside of video games where he like yeah. talks. He's just a 
guy from Brooklyn. He's like, hey, I, I gotta go get some Falka pizza. He's like a Ray. He just sounds like this. He doesn't sound Italian yeah. at all. He's just a guy. He, he sounds like all of our mother's cousins. <laughs> yes. But in video games, he has a really thick Italian accent. In some yeah. cases, you can barely understand him. Um, so this could go any which way. And I think it'd be very, very strange to have yeah. have a foreign accent coming out of Chris Pratt the entire time. Yeah, a so. and a I, 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 Brian Altano had a had a good tweet. Uh, yes. he he said, um, "I get why Nintendo hired a big movie star to lead the Mario movie, but I wish it was an Italian or an Italian American voice actor as Mario. Almost every Italian stereotype on film is angry mafia guy. Mario is a caricature, sure, but an Italian lead could have made that their own." I think the biggest problem, I mean, it's not really a big deal that, like, you know, Mario is freaking, uh, uh, is an Italian caricature. It's a little mm -hmm. bit, like, uh, dicey when he goes to sleep and he dreams about lasagna <laughs> and nobody thinks that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but then, then if, then they cast freaking Chris Pratt and he does a voice the whole time, then it's like, okay, is he going to be dreaming about lasagna now? Like, this is getting a little, yeah. a little it's get, crazy. It's getting, like, cartoon the bad kind of cartoonish you know yeah i don't and, and, want us to compare it to like hank azaria playing a poo on the <laughs> simpsons but it's similar mentality yeah in a way um and he, brian altano brought up uh uh i don't think i can pronounce this saviero <laughs> Uh, Raimondo, and apparently he he was in Luca, and he's an Italian guy yeah. who I think speaks English. And uh, I, yeah. I I I it was hard to find clips of him speaking English, but I think he spoke he spoke English in this game uh, in this movie. Yeah, and he sounded was, great. I was yeah, like, this uh, this was a that was Luca was a good movie, and that that was a good role. So that would have been. I mean, I understand like they want a big name attached to it. Yeah, they even they even did this. So they revealed all of the cast or all of the main yes. actors. They revealed it in the Nintendo Direct. They even revealed the same cast in Japan, even though they're probably going to be dubbed, or they'll have friggin' uh, subtitles that no that everybody yeah. has to read. But uh, I'm pretty sure they'll be. But that's a thing apparently. Like like Jack Black talked about how he went to the Kung Fu Panda premiere in China, even though he wasn't the voice of Kung Fu Panda in China. <laughs> they just wanted him here. And he was taking pictures and he's on like the posters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's like a thing. Yeah. Um so anyway, uh they wanted a big name. Unfortunately, it, as somebody else said, it looks like they just Googled famous actors and picked everybody they saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I understand that they probably would have had to have somebody else that's like a big famous person if they casted this yeah. this uh, Italian guy. But uh, yeah. if, if they're gonna, if they want an accent, they got to get somebody who's actually Italian. They can't get somebody who's going to do an accent the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for an Italian caricature. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> next to Mario, along the similar yeah. lines. Charlie Day as Luigi. <laughs> Here he is. And now I, I now I'll be real with you. I like this a lot. <laughs> this, this makes more sense hmm. uh if only because like Luigi is very like he actually has character and personality. He's been shown to be shy and timid and easily scared. He's a lot um, sillier. Yeah. And Charlie Day is all of that to a T, especially if you've watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which I know everybody knows him from. Um, I, I wish I saved it. Earlier today, I saw like a, on YouTube in my suggested feed, uh, Charlie Day as Luigi, and it was a clip from Sunny where he's screaming, and it's just Luigi animated, like they put his voice over it, and I'm like, oh, this is jarring. I don't know if I want to hear <laughs> Luigi talk like that. Yeah, I mean... Like, I feel like this would be great if Mario was like, like, you know, like voice like how we said he, he should be uh, yeah. and have somebody like really silly and like and like not in a thick Italian accent at all being yeah. Luigi. Um, 
but yeah, I get, I have I have similar issues with this that I do with Chris Pratt, but I do I I do think Charlie Day will at least uh This uh, at least, least makes a little bit more sense, but it's still mm -hmm. along those same lines of like we need an actor that, you know, people who don't play video games will recognize to play this character, which right. is pretty much the rest of the cast. So, but so, here and there it makes more sense. Next we have Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach. Uh yes. She's from the Queen's Gambit. Uh, she has Queen's a Gambit. very strange accent. It's like a, it's 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 an American accent, but with like a hint of British. A, is I'm like French, I think. I think she's French. She she she's she moved around a lot growing up, so she like yeah. So she got a she developed a weird accent, but it's like it's yeah. it's like super proper, and I feel like it yeah. it's like kind of perfect. So I I don't think I've seen anything with her in it. I all I know about Anya Taylor Joy is that Twitter and Instagram have told me she is the thing right now. <laughs> I I only know her and, from Conan interviews. Yeah, that's it. And but yeah, that's the reason why she's in this movie. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because she is the thing right now. She is popular with the kids. She mm -hmm. kind of looks like Peach in this one picture. Let's just go with that. Yeah, everybody's nothing against her. I've heard she's a great actress. I'm sure she's fine. I'm sure she'll I'm sure she's probably the most perfectly cast person in this whole movie. Yeah. But I am not familiar with her work, so I cannot speak to how she will do. All I can speak to is she is definitely in there because she is the thing right now. Like, why not have her and Charlie Day and then Mario be like, you know, somebody less famous and he yeah. goes alongside these people, you know? Or just be Charles Martin. I... <laughs> because again, I feel like if they're gonna make a Mario movie, they're gonna want Mario to like have substantial dialogue. You know, I hate that. I hate that. Well, put it to you this way: to bring up my favorite movie of all time, Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice. Oh, right. Superman only had like forty-eight lines in a mm. three-hour movie. Mm -hmm. He mostly made this face the whole time. You're delayed, so it's going to take a second for it to show up. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Like, that's all he did when he wasn't, you know, being mopey or threatening to kill Batman. And that sucked. So I don't I don't think that would have been the way to go for the Super Mario Brothers movie. I understand giving him an actual role, giving him actual dialogue. Don't know if the actor is the right actor. That's all. After Anya Taylor Joy, we have an ad. Cool. Uh, okay. Jack Black is Bowser. I think it's great. Same. I'm just afraid he's going to Jack Black it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, he's going to try to do a song? <laughs> no, he's he's going to. There are certain actors who, like, they don't act. They, they just be themselves mm -hmm. on screen. Like, and I'm like, look, I love Jack Black, but I don't necessarily want to hear Bowser do like guitar solo scatting that Jack Black does, <laughs> like to try and be silly. Does that make I, sense? I I I I am totally with you. I I I kind of I'm kind of down for him to be weird. <laughs> I he kind of looks like Bowser. He does. And look, well, uh. I'm sure, like, Jack Black, I, I know he plays video games. I've seen him at E3 twice. Both times I've been there, so I know he, like, wow. understands it and gets it. So, like, I'm sure he'll he'll do the role fine. It's just there's that thing in the back of my mind where I'm like, is, is he going to... Is he going to Jim Carrey Dr. Robotnik <laughs> this, or is he going to, like, actually try to play Bowser? Yeah, Jim Carrey Dr. Robotnik was not great. And, and everybody it said was, he was great. And I was like, what? <laughs> Did we watch the same movie? I, I, he was just Jim Carrey. <laughs> I don't know. He was being real. He it was it looked worse like, than that. Yeah. It looked like he was acting. It was like yeah. bad. <laughs> anyway. Uh, then we... Why? What? Entertainment Weekly is picking some weird pictures. Seth <laughs> Rogen is Donkey Kong. So... Uh, I'm kind of down. I'm kind of down. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, I have no real complaints here. Um, this does technically make this movie a crossover movie <laughs> with, with the Donkey Kong universe. Because <laughs> think about it. Like, technically, Donkey Kong and Mario are two separate things. 
True. And now you have this in here. Could this be sowing the seeds for a Donkey Kong spinoff series? I think that Universal or whoever's making this freaking movie is trying to add characters that they would like to spit off later. In in, oh, yeah. in case it does an insane amount and yeah. uh, and they can do that. Um cuz then you can make a freaking Donkey Kong movie. You can yeah. uh uh I mean, I'd imagine they'd want to do like a Zelda movie next if this is yeah. really good. Um but anyway, yeah, I think Seth Rogen would be great. Do you think Japan's yeah. gonna gonna care that he is he pro, he has a freaking weed company? Because <laughs> they like fire actors over that shit. They fire actors over like, uh, they fired that one guy off of that Yakuza spinoff for like cocaine. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure that's. Well, I'm sure they'll probably pass it off. It's like that's Hollywood. That's different. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Well, uh, so yeah, I'm actually kind of down for that. Now, next is Keegan-Michael Key as Toad. I don't get this at all. Yeah, I, well, I think that's partially because, you know, the, the picture of Toad we have in our head is just, he just goes all the time. <laughs> Discord did it. not like that. <laughs> so, so, so Too bad. There's a lot of Toads. Maybe he's just one Toad that talks different. You know, yeah. maybe he's like the Toad and he talks like Keegan-Michael Key, whereas the yeah. other Toads will talk in their high-pitched voice. Um, so, or maybe he does a voice. I don't know. I don't maybe. know what that was going to happen. Uh, I did see somewhere like Keegan-Michael Key is always in these types of movies. He's like, they just go to him for like these an these animated movies, these star-studded animated movies. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sure he, I'm sure like all they had to do was like, hey, who do you want to play? I don't know, Toad, I guess. Do they, does he ever do weird voices, or does he normally just be himself? As far as I know, he's normally just himself. Right. I was mean, it? on Key and Peele, he did voices, but they weren't, like, toad voices. Yeah. Uh, so, so, next we have Fred Armiston as Cranky Kong. I, what was I, so, I've been listening to the Batman audio adventures. They're on HBO Max, but they're also on Apple Podcasts, which makes more sense. Uh, and he played a character on it, and I didn't realize it was him. So I know he can do voices, and I know he can, like, you know, make it sound like something other than Fred Armisen. So I think he this could be a good choice for Cranky Kong, depending on what dialogue they give him. I'm honestly fine with it just being Fred, Ar Fred Armisen. <laughs> just, yeah. he's just friggin' Cranky Kong. He's just a cranky dude. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, next we have Kevin Michael Richardson as Kamek. What does uh, Kamek even sound like? Nothing. He does, I don't think he has. Yeah. Any? I think no. Yeah, he just goes like ah when you yeah, kill him. And that's a laugh. it. Ah! Yeah. Oh no, that's ah! the that's the that's the Bowser kids. Oh, uh, the Koopalings. The Koopalings. Yeah. I mean, he probably sounds the same. Yeah. But but I'd imagine in this he's, he's probably like a little bit of a bigger role here. Yeah. Well, Kevin Michael Richardson has like a very like deep voice. Mm -hmm. He almost he almost sounds like Kratos. He's never played Kratos, but it, it almost sounds like that. So maybe, I'd imagine they're gonna turn Kamek into something like powerful and booming. Maybe he's uh, maybe Kamek's gonna be like this like dark wizard mystical guy, yeah. and he's like the guy who's like, oh look, this is what's gonna happen to you. It's about to just come, and he's gonna fuck you up. Yeah. Anyway, we have Sebastian Maniscalco as Spike, yeah. the Wait. only Italian American. That's not no. That's they fucked that up. They fucked At that up. Entertainment Weekly. What the hell, dude? That's the wrong Spike. So, so we actually knew this because he like leaked it a while back but he is playing spike from wrecking crew who right. was mario and luigi's boss like for their like nine to five job right so 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 yeah oh. i mean so yeah he leaked it already he said like i yeah so he was on he's like uh, oh yeah i'm in it he was on burt kreischer's podcast of all things he's yeah. like and he was talking about his day and he's like yeah like right after this i gotta go i gotta do a lot i'm in a he's like i'm in a movie I mean, they're doing a yeah. Mario movie. I'm like their boss or something. Yeah. And so he's he's Spike. Um, but we know that it's that Spike because he said he's the boss. And also in the Nintendo Direct, the little icon in front of his name was Spike the Foreman. So Entertainment yeah. Weekly just they they just typed Spike Mario into 
<laughs> Google and got the wrong freaking Entertainment Weekly. Fake news. <laughs> uh, and then that's it. Yep. And I'd imagine there's going to be a lot more people, but probably nobody uh, as yeah. famous these, as that. These are like that. the the main the main cast. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, uh, it's gonna be a that's gonna be a weird one. I don't know be, what to think about it. Choices were made. That's all I can say about this booking. Uh, booking this casting. Choices were made. I'm. I, I hope that who like the people high up who are working on this movie know just how big of a deal this movie is going to be uh yeah. and they're not just firing out something to, to to i mean of course they're firing something out to get some money but i hope they know that this yeah. is like this has potential to have a whole freaking cinematic universe around it yeah that th- this is a bigger deal than like you think it is <laughs> yeah yeah especially and even worldwide because it's a freaking japanese thing yeah uh we should note that charles martinet is in the movie but he is playing like various other roles he's right. not playing mario he's basically just a side a glorified cameo yeah yeah i'm gonna see him next week at too many games you can also you see go. me at too many games next saturday and sunday if you're in the greater philadelphia area come on down have a good time i'm doing a panel on one of those days look it up in the little thing Trying to because I remember Charles Martinet like before Mario was like an accomplished actor. Yeah, that was it. He was in. He had a big role in the the David Fincher movie, The Game. Mm-hmm. And it's like really weird seeing him like when you know it's him because you expect him to do the Mario voice. Because <laughs> now every time you see Charles Martinet, he just goes into all the characters he plays from the Mario games, right? Which is all of them. And he's just like in his very serious ass David Fincher movie, just not doing that. Uh, where we have a lot of notifications again. Um, oh. we got T Dog Gaming. Thank you for the five months. Wow, four months. Pog, and we got XR Bill with a billion more gifted subs. Thank you very much. Uh, you. JT Slider with a subscription. R Bill with a hundred bits. Will I know it's all about O L E D S? But are you somewhat excited about Dune? Bob, I assume you're not into sci-fi. I am pretty excited about Dune. I haven't seen the first one uh, outside of clips, but I, it looks pretty good. I mean, what, the original David Lynch movie? I haven't, the 80s? I haven't seen that outside of clips, but the new one I'm pretty yeah. excited about. It looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to see it just because I'm curious about it. I have no real, like, love or, like, interest or, like, background knowledge of dune besides what i've gleaned from like popular culture um yeah i'm definitely gonna watch it it's just just out of curiosity not necessarily out of like any yo man they're making dune i hope it's good oh my god you know i i am gonna try to put the trailer for that movie on a game boy color cartridge that's my As goal you should yeah that's my goal i'm definitely not doing the whole movie but yeah because that's, that's like a three-hour movie. Yeah, but the trailer on yeah. a Game Boy Color cartridge. Just the way Denny Villeneuve wanted it to the be. The problem is if, when you put a video on a Game Boy Color cartridge, yeah. you have to do one... You have to export it as PNGs one frame at a time. Ugh. Like a PNG sequence. Like, you don't export yeah. one frame at a time, but you export it as a PNG sequence, so you have a file for every single frame. <laughs> oh, that's awful. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Can't wait to watch it in that, that friggin' a nice crisp 144 pixels. <laughs> I don't know how many bits of color it is. Did you know that, like, there's a, there's a Dragon's Lair port on the Game Boy Color, and it actually tries to be the Dragon's Lair LaserDisc game? I don't know that at all. I'd imagine it's that's exactly what your Dune trailer is going to look like. Uh, potentially. Here it is. I just pulled it up. Okay. I mean, it, that's yeah. it. At least they got the... They must have rotoscoped it. Like, like they tried it, like, to, at least. It yeah. doesn't look like they just... It doesn't look like they just freaking tried to, like, retrofit it. It looks like they straight up, like, drew new stuff. Yeah. That was pretty good. But I don't know how the hell you would do that. Like, how would you control it? It's like, it's a point and click. 
No, it's QuickTime. Yeah, but you use don't you use the mouse to make do the things? No, you use a joystick. Oh, so you go left and right and up and down. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so you just have to nail the timing. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, more notifications. Uh, Thrill House, thank you for the four months. Lou, Alban Lou Albano is the only real Lou Mario. Lou Albano. Captain Lou Albano. And Rogan as DK, kind of dope, though. Is Lou Albano the guy from the show? Yes. And why... What the hell do I say your name? I always just go, Nintolid. Thank you for the five months. No, the five bits. The 50 bits. God. Mario in the Mario movie be like, dance off, bro. Just you and me. I hate that. Proceeds a, yeah. a DDR on Bowser's ass. Yeah, please yeah. don't do that. I'm not. I'm not. That's down. what I'm talking about. So, like, that type of, you know, roguish idiot that Star Lord is. Is kind of the same character as um, Chris Pratt's character in the Jurassic World movies, but it doesn't work in the Jurassic World movies because they don't have James Gunn to help, you know, foster and care for and show Chris Pratt how to play the character properly. And someone who's just like close enough, just do do what you did there. Mm -hmm. So, well, uh. Mm -hmm. We gotta talk about that. that so that was announced during the Chris Pratt and being Mario was announced during the Nintendo Direct. There's a bunch of other stuff that happened during the Nintendo Direct. Uh, yes. Anything in particular that you enjoyed coming out of this Nintendo Direct? Uh, I thought I thought it was cool that Bayonetta is finally was shown, and is gonna get released. Um, I've only ever played the first one, but uh, this one looks very good. So I might have to give that a shot. It's also the interesting. Game. They they said that Sorry. it's going to. They said that they were only going to talk about games coming out winter twenty twenty one, and a lot of games are coming couple... out twenty twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> so that was weird. Uh, the Kirby um, game, yes. The Kirby game. So that's like. So usually Kirby games are like two D side scrollers. This is a full 3D platforming game. It looked like a, a Mario game almost. I didn't realize how big of a deal that was. This is the first 3D yeah. Kirby game. I had no idea. Yeah. So that that'll be cool. And, uh, it, and it looks really good. Like it like uh, so. The thing I don't like about Kirby games is that they're like really easy. They're like for kids. Like they're they're like yeah. they're like very forgiving. Uh, yeah. and obviously it's not for me, so I shouldn't really be complaining like this. Right. Um, but this game looks dope and I want to play it. And I hope that it's at yeah. least, it at least can be a little challenging if I want it to be, uh, so yeah. that I can like have some fun playing it. But, uh, the, the Kirby and the Forgotten Land, the Forgotten Land looks freaking awesome. It's like a, basically yeah. Kirby and the Last of Us. Yeah. Um, but a lot less boat sex, hopefully. Yes. Uh, the Castlevania Advance Collection, we knew what we were we were getting. There was, like, rumored for a while, um, but they showed it off here, and it's available right now. I should get that. It's not just the Game Boy Advance Castlevania games. They also threw in Dracula X on there, which is a Super Nintendo game. So that's a nice oh. bonus. Yeah. Um, uh, Dracula I, I, X is, is the shittier version of Rondo of Blood, <laughs> in case anybody was interested. I really liked. I mean, the only Castlevania I ever played was the one that we had with the Game Boy Advance, and it was yeah, uh, Circles awesome. of the Moon. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, so I've heard Aria of Sorrow is like the best Castlevania game, so mm -hmm. I'm excited to play that when I finally get this. Uh, there are two games coming to the Switch that are games that are we're always like, if this gets ported to Switch, maybe I'll play it. Uh, one of them was Disco Elysium, which oh, was okay. like one of those weird like detective games where your characters like has to deal with his alcohol abuse and like trying to like piece together his life while also trying to solve crimes. So that's interesting. Also, KOTOR is coming to Switch. Okay, so this freaked me out because we're getting a remake of KOTOR on yes. uh PlayStation 5. And yes. for whatever and by Aspire, the company that did yes. uh the ports uh or I did they call them remasters? They kind of feel more like ports. 
They're ports. Uh, they did the ports of uh, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, and uh, well, Je Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, and uh, Republic Commando. And yes. now they're basically porting uh, Knights of the Old Republic, but they're also making a complete remake on the PlayStation 5. And the last so, we saw of that was just like Darth Raven or whatever his name is. Yeah. Uh, so, for like a split a, second. Aspire has ported Knights of the Old Republic before. They originally ported it to Mac back in the day. And they were part of the recent Steam and iOS re-releases of this and uh, the sequel. Okay. So, like, they have experienced porting the original 2003 Knights of the Old Republic to other consoles. I'm surprised it took them this long to put it on Switch. Um, but now it's coming. Maybe now I'll actually, like, sit down, play it, and give it a fair chance. And finally remind everyone that the combat in that game makes no fucking sense. <laughs> I got it on uh, on iPad, I think, for some reason. Yeah, so I think it was free, and I got it on hmm. for iPhone. I remember playing it, being like, I don't understand how this works. So, do you not like uh, real time uh, real time turn based? Yeah, I feel like they need to just pick one. Yeah, either be real time or be turn based. Isn't there a bunch of Final Fantasies that do that? I mean, MMOs do that. That's like the, that's like an MMO thing. Yeah. So I um no Final Fantasies are like they were turn based for the longest time. Now I think they're starting to turn more real time. Mm -hmm. So uh but yeah, that I is that is I was shocked to, to to see this. That was weird. Yeah. Um uh, what else? Oh go ahead. Oh, oh oh why are you not excited about Chocobo GP? <laughs> They make it a freaking uh, Chocobo game. That's the little, little uh, chicken guy from Final Fantasy. Yeah, wasn't it you who said if you own a Switch, why would you get another kart racing game other than Mario Kart? Probably. I, was, I probably said that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, look. This looks very good. It looks like Mario Kart. It looks exactly yeah. like Mario Kart. It's not even trying to like, be its own game. Like At least Crash Team Racing and you know, the Sonic racing games, like those at least try to be their own thing. This is just fucking Mario Kart, dude. <laughs> yeah, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. Um, um, we also got more information about Splatoon 3. Um, the first thing they showed was Monster Hunter, Sun, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is a DLC for yes. Monster Hunter Rise. But it looks, it, they kind of made it look like it was a new game, but then they said must have Monster Hunter Rise in order to play Sunbreak. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a completely separate game at first. Maybe the one where you play as the monster. Another big deal, uh, Animal Crossing is getting the Brewster. So you get in a coffee yes. shop. Hell yeah, dude. Maybe I'll boot up Animal Crossing and say hi to my villagers yeah. again after two years of not saying anything. Yeah. Uh, uh, I thought... Go ahead. I was just going to say, Hyrule Warriors had a little video, and like I said before, uh, they have DLC, and like I said before, the freaking, uh, the, the frame rate was like horrible in yeah. their own trailer. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Act Razor is getting a, a basically a remake. So this I, is this was like an old school Super Nintendo game where it was like a side-scroller and an RTS. <laughs> I only know about that game because of the, uh, the uh, Wii Shop Channel song. Uh, it's one of the games in the song. Yeah, act yeah. razor this blazing like, laser. Uh, act razor blazing laser bases loaded mega Tarukan. That one. This this is like one of those cult classic games where like, uh, you basically your character is a god, and you the the RTS portion is like creating the land, and then the the side scrolling action portion is you like fighting off the demons who invade. Mm -hmm. They made a sequel, which was just the side-scrolling part, and everybody hated it. So it's cool that they're bringing that back. Um, we got more Metroid Dread, which we're already excited for that. That was uh, really cool, and uh, it looks really good. And I liked, yeah. I liked the little that's that voiceover sounded like it was her suit talking or something. Yeah, but, I was curious they, like who that was, but they never like explained. Yeah, it didn't. It could, it could yeah. be the ship. It could be her suit. It could be like like just a like a like a 
disembodied voice talking in the world that she's in. Yeah, yeah. But then it seamlessly started talking about like how you can find more information about the game. Yeah. And it, 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 it was weird. It was like, you can go to MetroidDread.com. And I was like, wh- what? Yeah. I thought you were in character. Yeah. I thought you were the Metroid. <laughs> um, go ahead. That's it. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, what else? So we're get- also getting Dying Light 1 and Dying Light 2 cloud version. The cloud version of Dying Light 2. I keep... I realize I confused Dying Light with State of Decay. Because I think they're the exact same premise. Like an o- a vaguely open world zom- first person zombie survival game with parkour elements. I get Dying Light confused with Dead by Daylight. Not because they're anything close to the same. Just the same name. Yeah. Um, so that's neat. Uh, and then of course, you know, probably the big news, which you mainly covered in your video, the Switch Online stuff. Mm-hmm. So it is an ex- a Switch Online expansion pack, which that's a clever reference to the Nintendo 64. I'm surprised nobody realized. Not a single so person not- realized it, Willie, the first one. Yep, that's me. That's what they call me first time, <laughs> Willie. Um, so we're getting N64 games. We're getting Sega Genesis games. Uh, and they're releasing controllers uh, for both. Nintendo made Sega Genesis controllers. So... My so, so, elementary school self would have peed. And this is this is like uh, this is like a fuck you to Sega. This is like <laughs> this is like like come here, little boy. We know you just. Yeah. It's been a long time. We can put our differences aside. We'll let you on our console. <laughs> we'll make a controller for yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, I I I titled my video something like nobody expected Nintendo to do this today. And I got a lot of comments that were like, uh, everybody expected Nintendo to do this today. Oh, really? Nobody. Maybe one fucking no. person who expected no. Sega Genesis games. Yeah, exactly. It was a foregone conclusion that we were not getting Sega Genesis games because, one, Sega already released a Genesis collection where all but, you know, four of these games are included in it. You know, all yeah. but four. Two of these games are available to play on the Switch in various different formats. I saw somewhere when when uh, Sonic Origins Collection comes out, there will be four different ways to play Sonic 2 on the Switch. <laughs> Think about that. Wait, wait, wait. How many different... So, so you got... you set... got Yeah, you go ahead. Do, do, run me the, through the, it. You got the Genesis Collection that's already available. Mm-hmm. You got this. You got... The Sega Ages version of Sonic 2, which is a standalone release. And then you're going to have Sonic Origins. Sonic Origins? Yeah. That's the that's the collection of Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles and CD. Oh, yeah. The new one that everyone was excited yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. My God. No wonder they yeah. didn't put Sonic 3 on here. Yeah. So that's four different ver- ways to play Sonic 2 on your Nintendo Switch. How many different ways are there to play Super Mario Brothers 3? Uh one. <laughs> one. Just one. Yeah, it's a it, this is a really really weird move for 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 them yeah. to do. It it doesn't make yeah. a lot of sense. Like Sega did not have to do this. Right. If anything, this Sega is not going to make as much money off of this as they did selling their Genesis collection cuz that's also available on other systems. I'm I'm gonna so, be real with you. Sega needs something to build their brand. Like, they need to get like pe- pe- people love the Sega characters. Everybody loves Sonic. Yeah. Uh, everybody loves Shinobi. But you need to freaking introduce it to some new players. Like, let more people <laughs> play Shinobi because like we yeah. love it because we know it from freaking twenty years ago. But if, it, if people weren't some people weren't alive 20 years ago to play <laughs> games like shinobi or our alex kid or whatever the hell yeah. so when i say sega doesn't need to do this mm-hmm. it's because they're better at releasing re-releasing their old stuff and making their old stuff available than nintendo is mm-hmm. the only reason why i can think of them doing this is because this putting it on switch online attracts maybe a different market than people who, you know, probably 
people who bought the Sega Genesis collection are probably people who played Sega Genesis games growing up. But because this is bundled with Nintendo games and it's part of Switch Online, which is something you kind of need, that opens it up to people who probably wouldn't have gotten uh, the Genesis collection on its own. Uh, Mohawk in the chat says the Genesis collection isn't available in Japan. Is that true? Really? Is it to... called the Mega Drive collection over there? Uh, I could look it up. On... I don't have my Switch on me right now, uh, but I, I I could look that up on my Japanese account. Yeah. But I don't I I don't know how I can go to the Japanese eShop website. But that would make a lot more sense. Yeah. To put Genesis games on there. Um. But it doesn't make any sense here in America because uh, yeah we have we we have all those games already and they they make more money. Not as Genesis Mega Drive maybe oh well yeah that would be called Mega Drive yeah that's a good good point. Uh, uh but but yeah it's also so we're also getting controllers uh we got controllers yeah. for the NES uh games that were on Switch Online and we got a controller for the SNES for those games and now we have which you can't find we have an n64 controller yeah uh that that looks exactly the same down to the thumbstick which was a piece of garbage that's like the most confusing part because nintendo did release a version of the nintendo 64 controller with a gamecube style analog stick did they it was only available in hotels. Remember when we used to go to hotels and there was just an N64 controller connected to yes. the TV? Yes. Those had GameCube style analog sticks. I did so, not know that. Yeah. So I don't understand. I mean, if they really just went with the old analog stick purely for nostalgia reasons, that's messed up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, you've proven that you can get it to work with a, with a better analog stick and you just didn't. The one, I, when I Google it, they look the same, the analog sticks. There is a version where it's like oh. a GameCube style analog stick. The LodgeNet N64 controller. Oh, it's... Di- it's it, is that GameCube? It looks just different. It doesn't look like a GameCube one, but it does look just well, different. Yeah, it's, so it's not it's like GameCube necess- like it's completely a GameCube analog stick, but it's it's clearly different. So, so, so th- there better. is a very easy mod to do where you could just put a GameCube thumbstick in a, a Nintendo 64 controller. Yeah. Uh, I'm very curious to see if that mod will work on this. I'd imagine the yeah. internals are probably very similar. I'm curious if, like, people are going to buy this, buy a bunch of these, and just take the analog stick out and put it in their N64 controller. <laughs> So the N64 controller's thumbstick was fine for like a week and then it immediately yeah. got shitty on everybody I know's N64. So yeah. uh, I I can't imagine. And there is a picture of it from the side where you see that it's just as tiny and shitty. So like I can't imagine yeah. this being any good. Also, I'm curious, Will, how, what's your thoughts on us getting the three button Sega Genesis controller and Japan getting the six button? So... So I remember when the Genesis Classic, the mini Genesis came out, it was the same thing. We got three button controllers and Japan got the six button controllers. And apparently, according to according to Nintendo spokesperson, um, the decision to release the three button controller in North America is because for US and Canada, a replica of the original Sega Genesis controller is the is the available model. This was by far the most widely used and well-known Genesis controller in these regions. So I guess Sega has some data that in North America, the three-button Genesis controller is what everybody knows, whereas apparently in Japan, everybody knows the six-button controller. I don't think that's true, because (laughs) everybody I knew who had a Genesis had one of each. And we all preferred playing with the six button controller. Yeah, how did we end up with so many Sega Genesis controllers? I don't know. We had we had the three buttons. We had two of the three the buttons. Three we buttons? had two of the six buttons, and we had two of the freaking uh, fight pad things. Yeah, which we we usually just play with the fight pads because they were better anyway. 
Yeah. But I mean, I don't I if they ever release a game for this that requires the six buttons like a Street Fighter or whatever, that's going to that's going to, you know, be a problem big time. I'm going to be real, I don't think they're going to But I mean, well, so oh. hopefully they, so, they hopefully they will let this this controller work easily with the Sega Genesis collection because uh, yeah, the Sega Genesis collection has weird control layouts. Like it doesn't work yeah. with a lot of stuff. Even the freaking uh, 8 bit do controller, like it could get a little weird. Or some of the Genesis yeah. style controllers, they don't really work that well with the uh, with the Genesis Classic collection for some reason. Yeah. Um. Also, I've I tweeted about this, but uh, Retrobit actually makes officially licensed Sega Genesis controllers that are wireless, are Bluetooth, are compatible with the Switch, are six buttons. And come in a different color. They can also come in clear blue, and they're cheaper. Mm. So I, I get why Nintendo's doing this. They did it with the other systems. Might as well do it for this. But and you don't have to be a Switch Online customer to buy the, the Retro Bit controller. Yeah, this, these I, things are friggin' fifty dollars each, and it makes a little yeah. sense for the N sixty four controller because that controller is kind of a big deal. It doesn't make yeah. any sense for a Genesis controller. Yeah, I don't get why. I don't get why they're do why. I just don't see that selling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the people who would buy that probably would know to buy the retro bit instead. Yeah. And of course, I, uh, we uh, this is going to cost more money to even play these games. Yes, they haven't said how much more or even when these games are coming. Right. Uh, so and and when the, the only, controllers will be available. Yeah. I think the only thing that the Nintendo thing has on the retro bit versions is that it's going to have like the home and share buttons on it. Mm. That's it. Is that really that important to you? Yeah, it's... Uh, the, even the N64 controller has the ZR button at the very top. It's, very, yeah. it's a weird so, spot for it. Uh, who, who tweet? Who put this in the chat? Uh, LJWVU uh, put a tweet from Retrobit saying, "With all the exciting news coming to Nintendo Switch Online, we're happy to show off our big news: a big se six-button Sega Genesis controller with an original port, a USB wired, and a 2.4 gigahertz wireless version with USB-C dongle. More details coming soon. That's pretty dope." So, what's like retro bits already on top of things right now? So th I'm also surprised that the Genesis controller that they made, that that Nintendo made, doesn't have L and R buttons at all. It just has the mode button, and then it has Which home is weird and share. Because the three button controller didn't have a mode button. The mode button was only on the six button controller, and that mm. button was specifically so that certain games could be compatible with the six button controller. Interesting. I always just accidentally hit the mode button and then nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> so I, I'm very uh, curious how these controllers are going to be mapped because they're not standard controllers, yeah. especially the N64 controller. There's going to be some weird shit going on. Um, they, have, they have to add some sort of like button customization to switch online. Right. Especially with these games coming. Well, so so the button, yeah, the button mapping in Switch Online right now is pretty bad. Uh, well, you, you have basically yeah. have like two options. Uh, but there's not that many buttons, so it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah. But N64 games, they're going to need some button mapping because not everybody's going to yeah. have... Most people are not going to have N64 controllers. Um, yeah. And, and hopefully the N64 controller will be able to be mapped in the Switch OS software also because uh, right now yeah. you can only really do pro controllers. And like a handful of other types of controllers, because yeah. what if I want to play Turok? That's not in Switch Online. That's outside of Switch yeah. Online. Uh, what if I want to play like freaking uh, uh, my version of Mario sixty four in the three D All Stars collection? Yeah, you know. So there's a lot of questions that I have about this stupid thing. Yeah. Anyway, so. uh, apparently there's rumors. Big rumor. Big fat. Let's 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 be very clear about the word rumor. Game Boy and Game Boy Color games is still expected for Switch Online. Rumor, rumor. It wasn't a rumor before, but now it is. 
Yes. <laughs> now it is because uh, we just got all that other news that nobody was expecting. Yeah. Full disclosure, I was skeptical about Nintendo 64 games. Mostly because we were already so sure that we were getting Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, Nintendo Life, uh, Nintendo lifted the lid on the Switch Online games, blah, blah, blah. And the new expansion pack will be comprised of a collection of blah, blah, blah. So what about those rumored handheld systems for Nintendo's online service? While there's no sign of them, Eurogamer's new editor, Tom Phillips, has now shared a bit of an update on on Twitter. Not news, not new editor, news editor. I was like, I know Tom Phillips. He's not freaking old. Yeah. I mean, he's not new. Uh, he's now started an update on Twitter uh, suggesting Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles are still on the way. And His quote is, N64 and Mega Drive were the two N Nintendo Switch Online platforms I'd heard about alongside Game Boy and Game Boy Color. I'm a call bullshit on that. I'd imagine N N64 Mega Drive are being rolled out first as they're more enticing things to prompt people to upgrade. If 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 N64 and Mega Drive were the two Nintendo Switch Online platforms that he heard about, why didn't he say that? Did he did he specifically ever say Game Boy Color? Yes. He said Game Boy and Game Boy Color. He never said anything about Nintendo 64. No, he never said anything about Mega Drive. Definitely. I Nobody don't, said anything about Mega Drive. I don't remember him saying anything about N64, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah. But he definitely said something about Game Boy and Game, or, or at least Eurogamer definitely said something about Game Boy and Game Boy Color because I remember that. Right. Um, but anyway, Phillips admits in his follow-up message how he's not sure if these particular systems will be a part of the higher pricing tier. But known insider Nate Drake <laughs> seems to think Game Boy and Game Boy Color games will be part of the current membership. Quote. I would imagine I would anticipate that Game Boy and Game Boy Color are part of the current Nintendo Switch Online service, and they Nintendo didn't want to conflate the two. So, uh, so known insider Nate Drake would think that Game Boy and Game Boy Color games would, would be on the, the current yeah. pricing tier. Uh, Nate uh, uh, earlier this month, the Nate the Hate podcast, the, the same insider Nate, who's the, the name of the freaking podcast. Said N64 games would be uh, coming to Switch Online alongside a higher price subscription. He also said Game Boy and Game Boy Color games would be coming to the Nintendo Switch Online before that. He was the one that basically got the news cycle going about the uh, yeah. uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And then again, got him going about Nintendo 64, which made me crazy because we're over here uh, talking about Game Boy games. And then all of a sudden, everybody's switching their tune to, to Nintendo 64 games. Yeah. Uh, but we were, I was on the boat for Game Boy because I honestly thought N64 would be way harder and I had zero faith in Nintendo to do anything cool yeah. ever. But uh, uh, here we are. But no, we're, we're getting the Nintendo 64 games. And not only that, we're getting Banjo-Kazooie down the road, which is nuts because that opens the door for all the other rare titles mm -hmm. to come over. We're getting win back. Our favorite make any game sense. on the Nintendo 64. Doesn't make any sense. No, it, it does make sense if you look at the NES and SNES games that are in the Switch Online collection. Because they're not the big AAA games from like your Capcoms and your Konamis and whatnot. They're from like whatnot. The, the, the lower tier developers. And Winback was made by Koei, which was definitely a lower tier developer. So they probably were able to get that very easily. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to try that support, again. Much third party support. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. Yeah, there's I like that game on PS2. There's like barely any that on games. PS2. That is weird. There's barely any games for the N64. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, oh, we talked about the six button controller coming to Japan. Uh, we don't yeah. need to talk about that anymore. Cool. Yeah. Let's read some notifications. We got yes. our bill with uh, a thousand bits. I want to support your channel. Is it better to gift subs or make corny bit comments? All right. So if you want to talk to us, bit comments. If you bit, if you gift a hundred bits or more, you will read your comment. Um, uh, but if you just want to give us money, gift subs because then you're giving 
the community like like subscriptions and if you get a subscription you don't have to watch ads when you click on in on the stream also fun fact 20 percent off subs right now we get the same amount of money but twitch gives you a discount on the subs so and that's only going to happen until the end of september so you get a discount on subscriptions right now but if you have amazon prime you get a sub for free so you don't even have to give us any money a uh, seesaw with 12 months one year of hanging out with my two favorite scrubs i don't appreciate that yo i don't want no scrubs <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much and mecha dragon with six months six months subscribe to bros uh how much i gotta pay you to draw ponies no leave me alone i did a, i did a little brony joke at the end of my last video I, I saw that. It's a good little goof. Anyway, uh, let's plow through some of this other news we got real quick. Okay. Uh, Fortnite has officially been blacklisted from the Apple App Store. Um, Tim Sweeney, uh, CEO of Epic Games, in front of the show because he liked one of my tweets one time, uh, tweeted out and said, Late last night, Apple informed Epic that Fortnite will be blacklisted from the Apple ecosystem until... The exhaustion of all court appeals, which could be as long as five years. Mm -hmm. So, wow. unless you already got Fortnite on your iPhone, you ain't playing that game anytime soon. Interesting that it's not all Epic games. It's just Fortnite. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was the game that, like, uh, that violated the terms of service. So. I mean... I saw what did, what did it say? Oh, Sweeney also wrote Apple lied. Apple spent a year telling the world, the court and the press they'd welcome Epic's return to the App Store if they agreed to play by the same rules as everyone else. Epic agreed and now Apple has reneged in a, in another abuse of its monopoly power over a billion users. So, Tim Sweeney is not going down without a fight. He is going to keep this this whole thing going until Apple basically caves. <laughs> Good I, luck, bro. I I do not want to ever be on the side of Fortnite. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, they got a reason to be pissed off. Yeah. I'll say. They, they just, like, Apple is basically preventing them from, like, accessing billions, potentially, of billions of customers. Yeah, they're being, they're fighting real dirty back yeah. i mean i mean epic was kind of fighting dirty in the very beginning but uh yeah. but apple's like basically lying to them to try to try to screw them back it's very strange um yeah. but it also we need to understand that it's not like it's not like epic games is like this is like the small like 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 underdog like apple's no. very big but epic is also very big so yeah uh, epic is a lot bigger than people think they are they do mm -hmm. more than just Fortnite. yeah so and Fortnite's also like the friggin' biggest game in the world. Yeah, um, right, of course. But yeah, they 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 they, they control a lot of other games because yeah. they, they make the freaking engine for like a lot of games. Um, yeah. So that's still going on. What else do yeah. we have? Of uh, Xbox will soon, an Xbox fix will soon let you resurrect your old Xbox 360 gamer picks. Yo, I love the picture they chose for this. I know, right? That's that's the Xbox 360 gamer pick. <laughs> so if you don't already know, if you if you have an Xbox One or an Xbox Series X and you're still using your Xbox 360 gamer pick, it's like this big. Cause apparently oh, yeah. on the Xbox 360, like it was a, a stupid, stupidly small resolution. Um a programmer at Xbox decided to take it upon herself to fix that. <laughs> And she found a way to fix it. And uh, if you're in, uh, if you're an alpha skip ahead insider, you, uh, no, sorry, I, I jumped ahead too much. Basically, they're going to roll out an update that will let you, that will upscale your Xbox 360 gamer picks to the proper resolution to display properly on Xbox One and series consoles. I wish that they did it with uh, nearest neighbor scaling, like hard pixels. Yeah. Instead, instead of like trying to make it upscale, right? Yeah. They should have just let it be uh, pixelated. Yeah. But uh, that's great. I'm down for that. Yeah. Which Whoa. is cool because I my Xbox 360 gamer pick was a Dark Knight one, and I like that better than the one I have now. 
my I thought mine was still my Xbox 361, but I guess not. It was just a picture of uh, it was just me. It was just my yeah. face. Maybe I added a beard and it it screwed everything up. Yeah. Um. While we're on the topic of Xbox, uh, I think this might have been two weeks ago, but uh, now, if you use your Xbox controller for uh, multiple devices, now oh, you yes. can just double tap the sync button and it will switch yes. to the other device. So if you go between like your PC and your Xbox, instead of syncing it every time, you can just double tap the Bluetooth or the, the sync button yes. and it'll switch to the other device, which is kind of a really big quality of life deal. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, what else do we got? Crystal Dynamics is helping make the new uh, Perfect Dark uh, game. Yes. Uh, so late last year, it was announced that the initiative, a new Xbox game studio, was working on an all-new Perfect Dark game. And today, they tweeted out that they are partnering with Crystal Dynamics, the world-class team behind character-driven games such as Tomb Raider, to bring the first-person spy thriller to a new generation. The teams couldn't pass up a chance to work together. We're still in early development, but incredibly excited to use this unique opportunity to deliver on the vi- on the vision for Perfect Dark. This is interesting because Perfect Dark is a first-party Xbox title. The initiative was created basically just to make Perfect Dark. Um... And now that they're not just getting an outside developer, they're getting a developer owned by Square Enix, one of the biggest publishers in the world. So it makes me wonder like how that happened, how Mm -hmm. that deal went down, why Crystal Dynamics approved it. I'm sure Square Enix had to get some, had to have a say in this as well. And what this means for Perfect Dark going forward. Like, what specifically is Crystal Dynamics working on? Are they going to be involved with future versions of Perfect Dark? Things like that. So I never played the one for the Xbox 360. I kind of want to, but I know it's very bad. Yeah, um, it's, it's not it's not great. <laughs> I loved the original Perfect Dark, and I was oh my stoked when I saw this trailer when they revealed yeah. that it was friggin' going to be Perfect Dark. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 like, I wasn't sure what the hell to expect because I, this is a brand new studio, so who knows? Um, yeah. But with Crystal Dynamics involved, this is going to be like a really big AAA game. Like, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. I was, I was kind of expecting like a throwaway game, but like now, now I'm expecting something huge, and I'm very excited about it. I don't know. I, I think throwaway game isn't the right choice of words here. Um, but it is well, like you said, like bringing in Crystal Dynamics, like that just adds more layers to like the size of this game, because Crystal Dynamics is a company that has experience making different kinds of games. The Initiative is not, so right. they can definitely bring in their expertise because they, they haven't just done Tomb Raider. They also did uh, what the hell is that game? The Legacy of Kane. They've done Gex. They've done. They did the Avengers game, which they, which is noticeably absent from the release <laughs> notes. Um, but they, like they're a developer with years of experience, so hopefully they can bring that to Perfect Dark. I hope so too. I'm very excited about yeah. this game. Hopefully, there's yeah. uh, some multiplayer and it. it's freaking sick. Yeah. Uh, anyway. We oh then we get the first image of the last of us show? I haven't even seen this. You didn't see this? No. This like blew up all over apparently like the other day was Last of Us Day. Whatever the fuck oh, that means. Outbreak day. They they turned it into the Last of Us Day. Oh. It's the day the outbreak happened, I think. Oh, okay. Yep, and that's it. There it is. That, I mean it looks like the freaking Last of Us. That's Scal's head. Why is a why did a plane crash? I don't know. Because <laughs> how else are you gonna know it's the apocalypse? Unless there's a plane just just crashed. Especially in the middle of a field. Uh okay. Well that looks okay. good. It looks like the game. I was I was listening to um the Escape is slightly something else podcast before, and they brought up uh the the Uncharted movie that's coming out and the, La- the Last of Us TV show. And they said that 
you know, those games are designed to look as realistic as possible, as live action as possible. So what is a live action TV show or a live action movie going to do that's any different yeah. than what the games do? I feel like it takes away a little bit because The Last of Us has uh, these moments that you can only really experience because of the connection that you have with the characters because you yeah. are the character. <laughs> Like, that's well, why us, it was such a big, jarring thing when you were playing the game. The Last of Us 1 in particular was is essentially The Road by Cormac McCarthy, and there's already right. a movie version of that. But what makes that work is that level of interactivity. You take that away, and you're just watching a knockoff of The Road. Right. It's kind of the, kind of the same thing with Uncharted. You take away that interactivity, you're basically watching you know, an Indiana Jones knockoff. So unless I don't know what they can do to those, to those series in a live action movie or television show format that can add to the story, especially if it's just going to tell the same story as the games did. I mean, I'm excited for more people, people who don't play video games to experience that sort of a story, but it's, yeah it's going to be a watered down version of the story. Like it, like I feel like there's a lot you can't do in, in a TV yeah. show that you totally could have done in, in, uh, in the, 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 yeah. the video game, but also the video game is, yeah, like you said, it's, they, it's very realistic. So, uh, it, yeah, I mean, they, they can't really do much different anyway. Uh, next up we have, Donkey Kong is ex, is the, the Donkey Kong expansion <laughs> is coming to Nintendo World before before Nintendo World's even a thing. Well, this is specifically in Japan. Right. Yeah. Since its opening, Nintendo Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Japan has gained worldwide attention from fans and guests who continue to level up with excitement with uh, while experiencing the land's rides, interact it themed environments and gameplay featuring iconic Nintendo characters to further immerse guests into Nintendo's well-known series of games. Universal Studios Japan will expand the land to include a new area themed after Donkey Kong. The area will feature a roller coaster, interactive experiences and themed merchandise and food. Guests will be able to walk on the wild side through lush jungles where Donkey Kong and his friends live. The new area is set to open in 2024. I forgot that this even that Super Nintendo World even opened. I I thought uh, I thought it was just a preview, and then they no, had to it closes again because yeah. of COVID. But no, it's open. Yeah, it opened in March. Yeah. That's crazy. And then we're getting a little Donkey. Yeah. It's a little weird that do we need a whole Donkey Kong area, like a whole one? Well, I imagine I don't know how big this is gonna be. I mean, I know the picture shows like a land comparable to the, the Mario land they already made. Mm -hmm. But see, this to me, it makes it seem like, okay, like the movie. You start with Mario and then you add Donkey Kong. Are they going to go down the line? Is there going to be a Zelda world next? Are they going to do Hyrule? I feel and then like are Hyrule they gonna do... makes the most sense. Donkey Kong world doesn't really make a lot of sense. You can add Donkey Kong to the pre-existing Mario worlds. Right. And it and like it wouldn't clash all that much. Zelda, I can see like needing an entirely new mm -hmm. like theme park to it. Yeah, that would be but, that would be wild. I I'm it's interesting that they went with Donkey Kong instead, but also we kind of saw this coming. There was like pictures of it in development before they announced yeah. this. So we 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 kind of kind of knew he was going to be there. Yeah. Um, anyway, last news. Uh, so speaking of Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix's Avengers game, it is coming to Xbox Game Pass. Uh, it's been a little over a year since Square Enix released Marvel's Avengers, and we players have fallen into a pattern of alternating excitement and boredom based on the game's sporadic downloaded content release. We get excited for new characters added like Hawkeye, Hawkeye, or Black Panther. Then we play <laughs> through the new content in a couple of hours and are bored by the end of the week. The game's ongoing story continues to shine 
but only in small bursts that dissipate quickly. Perhaps the game's addition to Game Pass uh, is the shot in the arm Avengers needs. Starting September 30th, uh, subscribers to Game Pass for Xbox, PC, and even those streaming via cloud will be able to hop into Square Enix's Avengers adventure completely free of charge. That includes all the wonderful story content from the game, from the game's launch right up through the War uh, for Wakanda expansion pack. So, Avengers has not had an easy go of it since it launched. Um, it's, it's been plagued with like bugs and glitches. Um, it was discovered to be a live service game when I think all people really wanted was just a a traditional s- single player experience. Um, the DLC l- rollout has been abysmal to say the least. Yes, there's a global pandemic, but it hasn't. It could. It honestly could have been smoother. Um, and this is costing Square Enix a lot of money, and it's has and it's nowhere close to making that money back. Mm-hmm. So, perhaps it going to Game Pass will help widen the audience, get more people interested, and more people playing the game. Um, and by extension, possibly spending money in the live service section of the game to help recoup some of that financial loss that occurred while developing this game. It seems like they desperately have a a player base issue. Like there's just nobody playing the game anymore. Yes. Yeah. So uh, anything to get this in front of people seems like the way to go. I mean, they just make the freaking game free to play at this point. Yeah. Or at least have like a preview. Like at least have like a, like a free till this level. Like like a lot of mm-hmm. games do, especially if they, if it has microtransactions. Like like why not? Well, the weird thing is because this has a this has a traditional single player story campaign, and I don't know how you can do a free to play game with a s- traditional single player story campaign. Mm-hmm. It's know? a weird bastardized version of like a free to play online game because because yeah. they because they kind of like tiptoed around it they like wanted to have it like an always online microtransaction ridden riddled game yeah but at the same time uh they originally wanted to make like a like a full-fledged story and we knew when when the game before the game was even coming out we were like what is this game even like it doesn't make any yeah, sense like we, we had no we, idea we, what was happening it, we it got weirder no and weirder we had like vague hints that like it was gonna be like you know similar to a beat-em-up and you like you can play as all the different avengers and there's going to be, you know, DLC and whatnot. But then we didn't, nobody really knew about the live service aspects to it until, like, right before the game came out. And, like, that, I think, that in addition to, like, all the bugs and glitches and stuff, like, really did damage this game's reputation. Mm-hmm. I have this game. And I've, like, been tepid in my, you know, desire to play it. Because I know of all this crap that's going on, right? But maybe I will. Maybe I'll just fucking bite the bullet and give it a shot. I'm surprised you haven't actually played it. I've been I've been going through other things. I finally beat Sonic Colors. That game is really good. I still have to play it. Yeah. Maybe I'll get that on my OLED Switch. There you go. Well, I don't know because it won't run any better. (laughs) Um. We got notifications here from, oh, our Bill with a million gifted subs. Thank you. Uh, 500 bits. Will, what's three general topics that you're passionate about? Uh, Batman, Star Wars, and I guess just general comic book ephemera oh will yes you like star wars yes oh well then why you got me it's tweet of the week time you stupid fucking bitch (laughs) you didn't put it in the keep (laughs) no because i i was searching for it while we were talking before (laughs) um this is by jim does a star wars or obs knobs it's uh it's it's uh what's his name from always always sunny 
It's a, it's oh, from Mac. Always Sunny. It's Mac from Always Sunny looking at uh yeah. uh the uh, 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 Luigi, and and it, <laughs> and it says, it, it, Dennis is Luke Skywalker, and Charlie says a bunch of ghosts crashing in an Ewok party. It just them staring at each other. <laughs> Get it? It's that's, a, that's, it's and the Return of the Jedi at celebration. Anyway, uh, that was the tweet of the week. Uh, but we got more notifications. We got uh, Bill X with 100. Our Bill again, 100 bits. Also, would you please consider to make a special live podcast for your European fans? It's 340 here, dudes. Yeah, uh, I would like to stream earlier in the day at some point and just see what happens. Um, can't promise a special podcast. Yeah. Uh, luckily, we're on YouTube. You can watch us there. Yeah. Evolton with four months. Keep up the good work, Bur- Wolf Bros. You guys helped a long road trip last week bearable. Well, thank you for listening oh, to us on, and making Glad we could help out and making everybody in your car listen. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll talk to you people now. Yes. Well, first we got to answer last week's Wolfden podcast. Yes. All the people who posted on youtubecom slash podcast Absolutely. In the in the comments of last week's Wolf Den podcast, we have the comic skeleton who says Bob's theory on it being a Game Boy controller is actually a good idea because they, oh, this is something that didn't age well. Because there was a Super <laughs> Game Boy controller in Japan made by Hori. Yes, that is true. Hori did make a Super Game Boy controller. It's weird looking. That was us talking about the uh, that because we knew there was going to be a controller for Nintendo Switch Online, and I said. Everybody's thinking it's N64 now. It could just be Game Game Boy still, but no, nope. yeah. it is N64. Have you ever Our, seen that Hori Game Boy controller? Let me see. Hori Super Game Boy because Hori also made one for the Game Cube that was designed for the the Game Boy Advance player, but they I, all, they originally made one for the Super Game Boy. I have never seen this. I've seen the I've seen the Game Boy Advance player controller definitely. Yeah. I've never seen this thing. I need this thing. That thing is very rare and very expensive. <laughs> Window R, color X, speed Y, multi L. Those are the buttons. <laughs> yeah, because I think you can change the speed and the color with the press of a button. Very strange. It must toggle yeah. like through some. Oh, that's so. Yeah. that's so weird. All right. Well, anyway, we have Sean Diggs who says Will was wrong. Jedi Fallen Order was better than quote pretty good. I'll confess, I didn't finish that game, and I think I was just mostly talking about EA's general lack of trying with the Star Wars license. Mm-hmm. You know, Jedi Fallen Order is without question the best of the EA series of Star Wars games. And I think the only reason why we got a a traditional single player game with no microtransactions um, is because it was Star Wars. They were willing to say people will buy it because it's Star Wars. I guess just just put it out there. But if that wasn't Star Wars, that game would have never been made. But I'm we, sorry, I'm sorry, Sean, if I undersold it. But um, yes, Jedi Fallen Order is without question the best of the EA Star Wars games, and it's not a competition. Yeah, we have a reason to be mad at EA for how they treated the Star Wars license. Yeah, uh, that Geek Zen says really, really enjoying the Home and Applied Segments podcast. Always entertaining <laughs> on my commute to work. Love you, bros. Yo, home and appliance segment. Here we go. Ember mug, yeah. fantastic. Nice, solid mug. It when you get to the end of your coffee. So the ember mug is a mug that Bluetooth connects to your phone, and you use your phone to control the temperature of the liquid in the mug. It goes up to 145 degrees. Um. So when you get to the end of your coffee, it gets a little too hot. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, because I guess it heats it up like like really quick. Yeah. Um, I'd imagine but, like you want it to cool down as it goes on. Mm, yeah, that should be an option actually. As it gets as you yeah. get less liquid, I mean, it knows when it's empty, 
as it gets yeah. less liquid, it should it should start to cool down a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's freaking awesome. I I could take my time drinking my coffee. It's freaking sick. That's that's cool. Maybe I'll uh, get myself one. It's a, it's a little pricey that thing. I know. I know. I bought it for you. <laughs> Uh, Nick Molnar says, I maintain the state of mind that if there is one game I get really excited for per direct, I'm happy. I've learned from the particular overhype train that is the internet on Nintendo Directs. I've learned about not getting overhyped is what he's trying to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I try to, I, I try to, as somebody who tells the people about all of the Nintendo news and stuff, yeah i or or at least you know wraps it up for people i try to tell them i try to mitigate expectations for people i don't want people to get too crazy about things and and and, uh i hope i'm doing a good job yeah i thought the Uh, last nintendo direct was freaking awesome yeah i thought it was a very good nintendo direct i thought Mm -hmm. it it showed off a lot of really cool games it showed off a lot of new games a lot of old games that we didn't know were coming to switch it had surprises um that, yeah, it was it was one of the good ones, but maintaining expectations is important, not just with Nintendo Directs, with everything. Right. I was thinking about Spider Man No Way Home the other day, Bob. Oh, okay. And I'm very excited. I, it was me too. However, that movie has so much to live up to mm. that if it misses one thing at all people are going to hate that movie like last jedi levels hate that movie yeah and like the the amount of like rumor and speculation around this movie is frankly absurd like i do not think that charlie cox is going to be in this movie playing daredevil like he did in the netflix show yeah that's weird however that would be weird. it would be cool but i i am i do not expect that to happen however the entire internet, the whole internet, all however many petabytes of the internet that there is, is convinced that he's in the movie. If he's not in this movie, <laughs> there is going to be riots in the streets. Uh, I think and, I think that uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield need to be in the movie. Oh, God. And if, if, if they're, they're not, not in the movie, then we're going to have some really big trouble. It's going to going to turn into mad max real fast yeah yeah that that's the only thing that i think is making or breaking that movie is it and there is a lot of writing on the movie but i think they can pull it off as long as they have like a lot of people from the history of spider-man in there but yeah they don't I mean, have already... mcguire and or andrew garfield we're gonna have some problems they're clearly hinting at that with uh dr octopus showing up as played by alfred molina in the trailer like they're right. letting you know that they are doing that but certain other things that people are thinking are going to happen in this movie i just don't think is going to happen in the movie like right. i would love to see daredevil show up in this movie as played by charlie cox i loved his daredevil but i don't think it's going to happen mm-hmm. so that's that anyway uh, we got notifications from In the Wild with two months. Thank you very much. And R. Bill with 100 bits. Bob, at this point, how do you feel about the OLED? Should all us regular Switch users con- consider to switch? No. I don't have one currently, so I can't tell you how much different it is. But I don't think it's going to be that much. It's not going to be worth another $350 out of your pocket. Yeah. Especially because most of the time you're playing that thing, well, not most of the time, but a lot of the time you're playing that thing, you're probably playing in portable, uh, in docked mode. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say it's probably not worth it for most people, uh, unless you just really need a new Switch. Or maybe if you have the very first original Switch and you want to make an upgrade, maybe now's the time. But I'm going to say probably not. Um, anyway. In the wild with 100 bits. Thanks for the Tuesday. Pick me up. No problem, bro. Uh, let's Now we're in the chat chat mm-hmm. for a brief minute because I got to pee. Uh, uh, mm, 
Uh, Zonum 91, what if it's Ben Affleck's Daredevil? <laughs> now that, that'll be a swerve, my friend, let me tell you. That it's possible. Yeah. At this point. Knucker says, Bob, when's the mouse pad or was the desk mat dropping? Uh, I have no idea. It's just it's in limbo right now. But uh, they're being uh, we're, we're making mouse pads. Wolf Den apparel is back, baby, in the form <laughs> of mouse pads. You can wear mouse pads. You can wear you can do whatever you want. I don't give a shit what you do with the mouse pads. Um, Will, are you going to see the Islanders in the new arena? Uh, eventually. I don't have any plans anytime soon, but I would love to, I would love to go see the Islanders in the new, the new arena. That would be, that would be nice. Support the boys. Josh Tor says, I'm upgrading to the OLED because my day one model sounds like it's having a heart attack playing anything <laughs> that pushes it like Monster Hunter Rise or Apex. It sounds like it's like you can hear it. That's a problem. Yeah, I mean, I have like a, like an original model Switch. I got it the year it came out, and it doesn't sound like that at all. Yeah, I would honestly still have my original model Switch if I didn't have this job. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, Edward uh, Bova says, Bob and Will, what do you think about Nintendo Switches all lines and sixty four games might be fifty hertz in Europe? And Kirby and the Forgotten Land being a more linear 3D experience like Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U was. Uh, it looks like a game that you would want to kind of explore around in. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, these games seem to be, like Kirby games, they make them really simple. So uh, yeah. a linear 3D uh, that experience would make, that makes would make a little sense. sense. For, yeah. yeah. Um, the 50 hertz for N64 games... In Europe, though, so like in Europe, that would be great. Right. Well, the thing is, like, so NES and SNES games in Europe were also fifty hertz, but are they fifty hertz on Switch Online in Europe? That I don't know, because that actually changes the way the game plays sometimes. Right. So I'm curious to know if Switch Online. NES and SNES games in Europe are still 50 hertz, or if they are using the American versions to be full 60 hertz. Let's be real here. The only one that's actually achieving 50 hertz is F0. Yeah. All the other ones are going to be sub 30 anyway, so yeah. it's, it's not even going to matter. But uh, <laughs> F0 is going to be probably the, 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 the only one that matters. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably better for Europe to get the games the way that they played them. Uh, right. some people argue that, um, 60 is better and maybe there's some Europeans who prefer the 60 here. I, I would prefer 50 if I grew up with it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, anyway, even if you do prefer the 60 Hertz and you live in Europe, you could just get an American account and just, just download the games like at no extra cost so yeah uh, it, it it shouldn't be a big deal like i like i have the japanese eShop or i have the japanese games on my switch and i don't pay yeah. for a nintendo switch online account although i added the japanese account to our family plan just to be safe so okay <laughs> uh i'll probably yeah i would do that if i wanted to play like european games for some reason yeah uh great journey thoughts on smash ultimate showcase happening the same day as Nin as nickelodeon brawl launches uh yeah so that's some shade being thrown at nickelodeon's uh, brawl yeah uh because yeah they're 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 announcing their thing the same day that that the game comes out but yeah there's some marketing wizardry that these companies do where they decide like this is the day that is most like yeah. this is the day that's going to do the best for our announcement and a bunch of companies just seem to pick that it could just be that or it could be Nintendo being like nah fuck these guys yeah <laughs> so yeah, I want to talk about something not living up to the hype that game looks freaking good oh, Nick, Nick no, I meant brawl no it does it looks very good I'm talking about the last oh, Smash Bros. Oh, right. 
I think let's let's let me go on record here and say I don't think it's going to be a character from any IP. I think it's going to either be the final guy from the subspace emissary, the boss man guy, mm-hmm. or it's going to be Sakurai himself. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to be anything else because because they can't live up to whatever they pick. Yeah, I mean, what what are the top choices like Sora? Doom Slayer, uh, Master Chief. That's the top choices in America. Fucking, <laughs> fucking Goku, Gino, Gino. Yeah, I don't. They, they can't. Akira from Astral Chain. No, no. <laughs> People would be very disappointed if they did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's unless it's like one of those characters. There's no way it's gonna live up to the hype. Absolutely no way. Yeah, it's going to be... It's I. It's going to be... Or maybe they just don't give a shit about the hype and they're just going to do whatever the hell they want. But I, I think it's going to well, be something something weird. Yeah. They've shown they don't give a shit about the hype. But, <laughs> you know, I think... I think everybody needs to just calm down. They need to just relax and remember... That this is this is not real life. This is just a video game, right? Why is it never Waluigi? That's like a meme pick, dude. Nobody actually wants yeah. Waluigi. Uh, our Bill with a thousand bits again, or do you wait? Oh, he okay. This is two part. First, he sent a hundred bits. Yeah. Could we arrange in three weeks' time to consider to have a brief discussion about Dune? Or do you, do you, my favorite Wolf Bros guys, think I'm in the wrong forum? Uh, we can have a brief. If it comes out, we watch okay. it. But I don't know if we're yeah. going to watch it when it comes out. It'll be on HBO Max. So, yeah. It, again, it's a three-hour movie. It took yeah. me two days to watch the Snyder Cut of Justice League. So, I don't know when I'm going to have time to watch uh, Dune. Um, I'll try to watch it when it comes out. But no promises. Uh, we got gamer lady with the six months. Thank you for the content. Love this podcast. Usually watch it three times. God damn. That's some watch time. Thank Jeez. you for your watch time. Yeah. Thank you for your watch time. Uh, and then that's it. Yeah, I think we're good. Cause I got to pee. Thank you. All, all right. For hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and subscribe to us over there and check us out on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice i almost choked on my own spit but no matter where you get Mm -hmm. this content from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms you want to raid you want to raid ron futches yes oh he's not wait what's he doing he's not i don't he's he's not there (laughs) oh wait I, i got the wrong screen He's not there. He's just running into a wall. He's just AFK. Oh my god! Oh my god! Please, can we raid Ron? We will. We will raid him. Yes, guys. Thank you all for hanging out. I will see you probably Thursday. This week's gonna be weird. I got some videos to do, but I appreciate you all being here and hanging out in the meantime. Anyway, and checking out all the content and whatnot. Stay tuned for to to YouTube.com/slash Wolf Dead. And all of our other forums. Thank you very much. We'll see you all later. Goodbye. Bye. Say hi to Ron. <laughs>